Hi there, we're here with Scott Ayler, General Manager of AMD's Data Center Solutions Group. Hi Scott, how are you? Hey Stephanie, great to be here. Great to have you with us. We're here to talk about the second generation of AMD's Epic Server Processors and AMD's uh, Data Center Strategy. So let's get right into it. Uh, AMD is rolling out the Rome Processor. Uh, Scott, what can you tell us about its performance? So we're very excited to, to announce the Rome second generation processor family today. And, and really the message that we're delivering to the market is uh, Rome and Epic second generation is really setting a new standard for the data center. And that starts with performance, as, as you mentioned. So when you look at our approach to you know, driving this new standard, it's all about leadership. It's about leadership performance. It's about leadership architecture. It's about leadership security. And so when we think about um, where Epic second generation falls from a performance perspective, it really doubles the performance of the prior generation, which already was quite compelling and competitive to begin with. But I think more importantly, you know, we see across all of the high volume, high growth relevant workloads, we have an 80 to 100% performance advantage over and above our nearest competition. And, and that comes on the back of an environment where typically generational improvements of 10, 15, 20% are the norm. So when we take and bend the curve on performance, generation on generation, in terms of doubling performance and having that level of lead over and above our competitor, you can imagine why customers and partners are super excited. I'm sure they are. And we know that you've made some initial sh shipments to customers already. Uh, can you, what can you tell us about the customers you're working with and what um, their feedback has been? Yeah, we actually have already started shipping in production in the second quarter of this year. And I think the, the reception has been fantastic. And, and really, um, you know, customers are excited about the performance that they see. But really, it all started about two years ago uh, when we first brought Epic first generation to market um, because we had to re-earn our customers' credibility, our re-earn credibility and trust with our customers and partners. Um, we made good progress in the first generation in the areas of cloud, high performance computing, um, enterprise. Um, so that momentum, I think, really helped us build a very strong foundation that is a springboard for what we're gonna do uh, with Epic second generation. So I think people are seeing uh, dramatic uh, performance improvements as you would expect, given this level of kind of generation on generation uh, upgrade. So I think existing customers are excited about what they're seeing in terms of their performance uplift over and above first generation, but we're adding new customers as well. So uh, we've announced many new cloud partnerships, um, many new uh, end customer partnerships. Our platform number generation on generation has doubled. So I think the market is, is pretty excited about the progress that we're making together. I'm curious, when you're rolling out um, a new processor like this, uh, does that typically, it sounds like shipments usually start with cloud providers and then uh, enterprise customers kind of come on board later on, is that typically how it goes? I think in, I, I think that, I think that's right. There's maybe one notable addition to that is so generally the early adopters, you know, tend to be on the cloud and cloud service provider side. Um, the other area where we typically see early adopters is in high performance computing. So a lot of the high performance computing wins that we've already announced on Epic second generation, we've been engaging in early evaluation and benchmarking with those customers, even into 2018. So when we look at those early adopters, it tends to be cloud service providers uh, that can move very quickly on a single unified infrastructure. HPC customers that are looking for that bleeding edge performance um, that really kind of want to get first to market. And then enterprise, I think, is, is coming along nicely as well. But that's where we would expect the ramp to come uh, in the coming weeks and months. And clearly, this is a market that's still dominated by Intel, NVIDIA. How do you uh, gain the trust of your customers and bring them on board uh, when you're up against such major market players? You know, I, I, think, I think, Stephanie, it's an important point that um, whether it's cloud, whether it's enterprise or HPC, um, these customers are really kind of betting their business outcomes on who they choose, right? So I think the progress that we've made um, in the first generation around developing uh, capability and technology that was leadership, that was differentiated. And I think more importantly, we did what we said we would do, right? So we, we started to build um, that credibility, build that trust. And when people are seeing us now executing on our roadmap without moving it, without delays, without you know challenges from a technology perspective, while our competitors have faced some of those, they start to really feel the confidence that you know they're now moving with a leader. 
Um, and that's one of the messages that you see as we've announced, you know, second generation here today is, um, you know, we're moving into the lead. Leadership performance, leadership architecture, leadership security, and again, looking at, at establishing kind of the next foundation for um, the next, gestura- next generation data center. And, and to that point, you know, one of the kind of most pronounced kind of validations of, of kind of the trust that customers are, are, are placing in us is actually earlier this, uh, this year, we actually announced the Frontier Exascale win, um, which is going to be uh, the, uh, the world's highest performance exascale system. So when you look at the Department of Energy, uh, the US national government investing in AMD technology, both from a CPU and GPU perspective, that's confidence, right? That's the ability uh, for, uh, for our customers and partners to know that really um, we're here to stay and, and we can be trusted. Um, can you share your expectations for our market share gain in the coming years? Um, I think we've been, uh, we've been you know, visible that we, we expect you know, to be able to get to double digit market share in the next four to six quarters. Um, I think is a consistent statement that we've had, uh, but I think customers and partners are very excited, right? I think um, we talked about, you know, our ambition in the first generation with, with Epic uh, was to get to mid single digits. We did that at the end of 2018, back to this point of building confidence um, that we're not only here, but we're here to stay. Um, I think we're on the right trajectory to continue that growth. So moving beyond the processor specifically, providing that performance as you've been talking about. What other steps are you taking to ensure that AMD remains part of that customer strategic roadmap that, um, you know, you can evolve with their software and applications? You know, it's interesting, Stephanie, you asked that because more and more as we see, you know, people are putting kind of their business outcomes in the hands of of their IT makers, it it really requires a partnership. So we look at our relationships with all of our OEM customers, um, our relationships with our cloud customers to really develop technologies that enable them to kind of do things that they weren't able to do before. One good example of that, that we've been working very closely across cloud OEMs and even a lot of the OS providers is our security, right? So we actually have a secure encrypted virtualization capability that is unique to AMD. And when you look at all of the right OS and hypervisor vendors, all of the OEMs, and now the cloud providers starting to adapt that technology that means their computing can be made more secure. It's evidence of how we have to invest together on technology that enables them to solve real problems. Um, And aside from the competitive landscape, uh, what other challenges and uncertainties are you facing in this market? Yeah, beyond the competition, um, you know, high performance processor design and manufacturing is a tough is a, is a tough business, especially when you look at, um, you know, the challenges, you know, the kind of Moore's law has been facing, right? I think it's, it's very widely known that the, the rate of technology introduction is slowing down. And so when you look at what that provides us as an opportunity, is it gives us the capability to innovate in new and different ways. So when you look at in Epic first generation, we brought together the first multi-die approach or, or really kind of the first mainstream multi-die approach uh, to high performance server processors. We now take and evolve that to a hybrid multi-die approach in the second generation. Um, when you look at the advancements from a core technology perspective, the move to seven nanometer, uh, the move to more integrated memory, these are all things that we need to kind of keep in our toolbox that allow us to keep advancing the progress that the industry needs while this wall in terms of performance and cost that's out there is more slow slowing down is really there. So that's one of the bigger challenges, but you know, again, it presents an opportunity for us uh, to really innovate, uh, leveraging the great capabilities and assets we have as a company and our people process and technology. Right. Um, you know, one thing I was wondering was um, about your status as a fabulous company and how that impacts your strategy. Is there anything you can say about maybe any unique challenges or opportunities that presents? You know, it actually uh, is a challenge and an opportunity uh, as well. So when you look at the opportunity, uh, it means that we can really partner with the best of the best, right? We're not tied to our own internal foundry technology. Um, So we can choose the right technology for the right product at the right time. So it offers us tremendous flexibility to partner with the best of the best. And that's why we really think of it as a tremendous asset that allows us to stay kind of at this point ahead of the curve. I think there's been a lot of, a lot of press about the fact that, you know, we're the first to seven nanometer uh, versus, uh, versus our competitor. Um, and really that's because of the capability of us to partner from a boundary perspective. 
Um, and, and we're very excited about what that, that gives us uh, because it really is what the business and what our products need. Mm -hmm. Great. Anything else you'd like to mention, Scott? No, I think, Stephanie, we're, like I said, we're very excited about uh, the Epic Second Generation platforms. Um, we're very excited about establishing a new, uh, a new leadership position, a new standard for the data center, uh, and, and super excited about the opportunity to share that with you. Great. Thank you very much. Thank you.